now we got our React application, I want to talk about the file structure, the directory, and how we should architecture a React.js project. Okay, so here you can see that we've got a folder, and this folder is called React from 0 to 0. And we got here the tree, okay, the file tree, where we can see that we've got the node module folder, we've got also a public folder and a source folder. Next to these folders, we got files. We've got the vit.config.js, and this is where we are going to use vit to configure our project. We've got the readme, where I just put more information for you. I got the package.json, which is basically the tool that Node is using to install all the modules and libraries required to make the application to work. We've got the package.log.json, which is not important at this step. And we got the index.html. So this index.html, if I drag it into a browser, it's not going to work. It's not going to work, why? Simply because here we are in a development uh, environment and this is not the final version of our application. The final version of the application, you can get it with building actually the app. So what does it mean? Let's just open the terminal again and stop the server if it runs. And here I'm going to type npm run build. Remember we typed npm run dev to launch the server, but actually if I type npm run build, it's going to take all these files and it's going to create the final version of your application. So I'm going to type enter and here we can see that vit did some work. It built actually the application for the production and we can see that it created actually or transformed 34 modules into a folder called dist. And if we look at here, up here, we got a dist folder which contains another application, which is actually the final version of our React application. Okay, so here we got another index.html and here basically comparing the two uh, index.html next to each other. So we're gonna put the one from our application on the left and we're gonna keep the other on the right. Here we can see that we got a different index.html. So how is that possible? Well, it's possible because here this index.html which is present on the main uh, project is actually the version that we're gonna use basically to develop our application. The build version will be the final one, the one that is going to be on the server that will run. And we can see that we got a div here, id root. We don't get any text, anything. This is JavaScript that is going to create basically the application dynamically when we are gonna call it, okay? So here, let's come back. I'm gonna close this one. I'm gonna close everything. Here we can see that we got a different index.html. We got here the uh, vit, actually SVG, that doesn't move. And we've got some assets. And here we can see that we got the chunks of the applications. Those little parts that have been cut by vit during the build. We've got here the CSS that is compiled. We've got the JavaScript here. And we can see that in the JavaScript, we've got React and all the React code that's, that has been imported. All this React code is the code that is going to do the job directly on the um, build, or the, not on the building, on the serving of the app, okay, at this point. And here we got the SVG. All right, so we can see here that basically all the files that are here out of the dist folder are basically not the final version of the app. So we can't use these files to, deep, to actually uh, put the app online every time we will need to build the app. This is why we're going to use either a, a CI CD tool that will do it, or we're going to deploy it on Vercel, Netlify, and etc. etc. However, we don't need to have Vercel, Netlify, or another um, provider to help us to deploy the application. We can simply create a React application like this and deploy it ourselves on the server with Node.js. We will have to do the configuration ourselves, but it's totally possible. Also, we could use React, for instance, inside uh, a CMS like WordPress to create our own plugin. This is totally possible, and this is why React is so powerful.
Okay, so we got here those other files. So ESLint, this is used for actually the styling inside, not the styling of the app, but inside my application. It's here to check that everything is good in terms of coding and good practices. Let's say it like this. And finally, we've got the source folder. So the source folder, I want to stop right now on the source folder because this is probably the most interesting part for you guys especially if you are a beginner or if you want to know how to architecture your actual react js application on this source folder i got at the root four different files here the app.css and we can see here it's a just a css file and by its name, we can understand that it's related to the app.jsx. And we can see that it has been imported as a module here. So we can see first that we import some CSS into some GSX and it's working. OK, exactly like if we would uh, uh, use a, a, a style link inside our HTML. Here it's working directly. React understand that here you want to link the CSS. Then we've got here an index.css, which is another CSS uh, style sheet, but there is no index.gsx. We've got a main.gsx. And this main.gsx, guys, this is the root of your React application, the root of everything. If I delete main.gsx, it will not work anymore. Why? Let's look at the code. So here, I got this file and I'm going just to close all of the file here to be clear on the Zen mode. There we go. So we can see here at the first line of my file, I import React from React. And if I look at React, we can see that React is down there in some HTML with some here tags, HTML tags, and we don't really understand what's happening in here, but we can see that we call React. And then we call the React DOM. So what's the React DOM? There will be a complete listen about that later. But now let's say that React cannot work without this DOM. And this is a client DOM. Here we call this DOM. OK, so we can see that that's basically the function that we call. When we call our main.gsx, it's going to call React DOM and it's going to call what the function create root which is part of the React DOM. If I click on the React DOM, I got a lot of code here that is basically the root here of the React DOM. We can see here on type React DOM. And we call React DOM, which has a lot of function, and we call the function create root. Remember what is root? Let's look at it. If we go here on the index.html, we can see that we got an ID root. And if you did some JavaScript before, you can see here that we are calling document.getElementById of root. And now, if you follow the course, if I go back here, I can see that I got also the ID root inside the development index.html. So here, it means that I'm targeting, actually, React is targeting root. It's going to create the root of our DOM here, and it's going to render. What does it mean render? It's going to display the application. It's going to do all the work to basically get all the bricks and create the house finally here inside this here HTML, which is basically GSX. And we call React, and we finally pass what? We pass the final product. Here in these steps here, React is doing his own job of gathering everything, changing CSS into CSS, GSX into HTML, JavaScript, etc., etc., all the components, everything that we're going to see later. And it's finally going to be rendered in here with the index.css, which is here also. And it's calling app. So if I go to app here, we can see OK, we can see that we've got some React code and some GSX code, actually. Here, everything is written in React. And this is the page that we got in here. This is how it works. Everything comes from main 
an app. So later we will see that we can change that. We can add probably some more files, some more components to our applications, to our application. And basically this is how it articulates the whole React application like this. Okay, so let's just now have a look at the structure of the code because now we've got this, which is build, how React works was the subject of this lesson. Now we want, we would like to know what should we do? How should we um, start about the folders, the file? What should I do in terms of the file and directory structure? 